Welcome to our second video about the mineral calcite. Calcite is a member of the calcite group of minerals which also includes the carbonate, magnesite, siderite, rhodochrosite and smithsonite. Calcite forms a series with rhodochrosite which means that the calcium and manganese which are the chief metallic uh, components of these two minerals can substitute for each other gradually from calcite to rhodochrosite effectively without the loss of crystal structure. The intermediate minerals are often called mangano or manganoan calcites although they're not officially recognized as separate species and the name is not officially approved. The presence of manganese in these minerals gives them a very attractive pink coloration and some of the prettiest uh, specimens come from Kavnich in Romania and Tsumeb in Namibia. Magnesite, siderite and smithsonite do not form their own series with calcite uh, through substitution of their own metallic elements um, with calcium. Uh, instead all form quite distinct minerals from uh, one another. Nevertheless, because they all uh, belong to the same calcite group, uh, they all share the same crystal structure and crystallize in the trigonal system. The structure of calcite was one of the first to be obtained using X-ray crystallography, uh, a method of finding out the internal structure of matter using X-rays, discovered by William Bragg. Uh, he published these results in 1914 and has awarded the Nobel Prize for his discoveries in 1915. The structure of calcite is not very complex but can be hard to visualize. It is sometimes described as a modified sodium chloride structure. On the left is the cubic structure of sodium chloride where sodium ions are purple and chlorine ions are green. On the right hand side is calcite where calcium is yellow oxygen in blue and carbon is grey. We can see that there are rows of alternating calcium and carbonate units just like sodium and chloride alternate in halite. However calcite is not cubic. The carbonate groups break up this cubic symmetry in a number of ways. First the threefold symmetry axes line up with only one of the symmetry axes of the cube shown here in red. Second, they alternate in orientation, shown in the diagram by two shades of grey. But most importantly, the wide spacing in the carbonate groups, which are larger than chlorine, stretches the atomic distances and distorts the cube into a rhombohedron. In other words, the unit itself forms a structure like a cube that's been pulled out in opposite corners. In order to balance the complex ionic charges within the crystal structure, it is actually necessary for each calcium ion to be surrounded by six oxygens of different carbonate groups. Uh, the calcium is therefore said to have a coordination number of six. Correspondingly, each oxygen is then coordinated to two calcium ions, as well as to the carbon ion at the center of the carbonate group. So overall, neutrality of the, of the structure is preserved. To make things really interesting, two slightly different rhombohedral unit cell structures of calcite exist, one that is much steeper than the other. This means that the unit cell determined by X-ray crystallography is very slightly different from the one which gives rise to calcite's observed cleavage and other properties such as twinning. In addition, calcite also has a marked hexagonal symmetry. What these mean in practice is that calcite, whilst having a relatively simple chemical composition, shows a wealth of different and varying physical properties. Now, for a start, the physical properties of calcite are highly anisotropic, which means that there are big differences between properties parallel and perpendicular to the C-axis which was marked on an earlier diagram uh, by a red line. So for example the refractive index of calcite is different according to the crystal orientation. Since the refractive index depends on the speed of light uh, through a material it means that calcite alters the speed 
differently depending on the direction that light passes through a crystal. In calcite this produces an effect called double refraction or birefringence whereby an image viewed through a crystal is seen twice. In addition, although more difficult to see without special equipment, the two beams are polarized so that the rays of one beam are at right angles to the other. The entire effect happens because of the particular orientation of the carbonate groups in the crystal structure. The three oxygen atoms lying in, in a plane affect light arriving parallel to the plane differently than light arriving in a perpendicular direction. Light travels faster when parallel and more slowly when it streams through the crystal in a perpendicular direction. Another feature which arises from calcite structure is that crystals are extremely varied in habit and often highly complex. Over 800 different forms have been claimed which is easily more than any other mineral. These range from tabular to prismatic to botryoidal to needle-like and so on. And a particularly unusual form is the fibrous uh, variety lublinite. However, in spite of all this complexity, the vast majority of uh, these different types of crystals can be divided into one of three important habits. Uh, the first one is scalenohedral, uh, which is probably the most common and best known of calcite crystal forms, and is often called dogtooth calcite, after the very distinct shape of the crystals. The second important habit is rhombohedral, and it shows the classic distorted cube shape. The best known variety is the transparent and colourless form called Iceland Spar. Uh, it was originally discovered in Eskifjord in Iceland and therefore uh, the name. It occurs locally in basalt cavities, however most of today's specimens come from Mexico. This is the form which shows the light splitting properties the best, particularly when transparent. Because it also polarizes light, it is widely used for optical equipment. The last important crystal habit is prismatic. Uh, these tend to be elongated crystals with short stubby terminations. Because of this shape, these types of crystals tend to be called nailhead calcite. Out of all the different crystal varieties, this is probably the one with the most different types of shapes, sizes and terminations. Uh, this is a good example with hematite inclusions from China. And finally, this is how the three different crystal habits are aligned with the symmetry axis shown earlier in red uh, of the unit cell, here marked with the letter C. So, the nearly 800 or so different crystal combinations and variations of calcite are derived from these three basic forms. However, if this complexity wasn't enough, calcite is also very prone to twinning. Now, twinning occurs when a crystal aggregate contains two or more parts whose structures do not align the same, in the same orientation but are related geometrically, for example through a reflection across an axis of symmetry or rotation. The result is a combination of two separate crystals in a variety of different uh, but specific configurations. Calcite uh, broadly shows four types of twinning according to defined uh, symmetry laws, uh, but the individual descriptions of these is really beyond the scope of this video and we think we'll probably cover those off in a separate video uh, that we'll do on twinning in the future. However, for the time being, uh, we'll take a quick tour of the most common examples of calcite twins. Now, the first is when two scalar hedra join together in the way shown here. These are often called parallel axis twins, uh, and uh, to be true twins they should have two small notches across the twin plane so across the plane of symmetry across the middle if these notches are missing then this really isn't a true twin crystal the next type are called inclined axis twins uh, and an example of this is shown here um, again these are based on the scalar hedral crystals uh, and several different types of twin are possible depending on the angle between the crystals. 
Another set of twins is based on the rhombohedral system. Again two forms are possible depending on the angle at which the crystals meet. Uh, just look at the V-shape at the top of the crystal to give you a, an indication of which type of twinning it is. The first type are often called butterfly twins because of their distinct shape uh, and are more common. Some locations where good examples uh, of specimens have occurred are for example Broken Hill in Australia. Uh, the second types are called heart twins and uh, are much rarer. Some classic locations where these uh, have been found are Goyang in uh, China and Egremont in England. So far we have only looked at contact type twins where the crystals are adjacent or next to each other. There are however some very rare instances where calcite forms penetration twins. These are much much rarer in calcite than in other types of minerals for example fluorite. Examples of locations where calcite forms penetration twins are in Belluno, Italy and also Winfield, Pennsylvania. Calcite often contains small amounts of additional atoms such as strontium, barium, iron, copper, cobalt, zinc uh, and others. Uh, we have already uh, mentioned the series with uh, rhodochrosite through the substitution of calcium by manganese. However, none of these other metals are present in large amounts because calcite structure is quite tight and there simply isn't room uh, in the lattice for large metal ions. Um, they therefore have little impact on the overall structure of calcite, but some like iron, copper, cobalt can give it uh, very pretty colors, uh, otherwise calcite is normally white. Uh, so tiny amounts of iron, for example, can make uh, calcite red or yellow. Uh, copper can make the mineral green, whilst cobalt can produce a pink color similar to rhodochrosite, making it quite difficult to tell mangano and cobalto calcites apart. Although the N series rhodochrosite is an unmistakably uh, rose red. The unusual blue uh, calcite found in the Deccan basalts in India is due to the inclusions of chloride uh, and a very rare violet calcite uh, is coloured by the presence of the rare earth uh, metal neodymium. Now very small amounts of other impurities incorporated into the calcite structure can make calcite uh, fluorescent and also less commonly phosphorescent. Here we see a selection of calcite specimens and then under UV light and then with the UV light switched off we can see how several of these specimens phosphoresce in blue. Common colours of calcite fluorescence include red, orange, yellow, green and white. Red and pink coloured calcites are usually activated by a combination of lead or tin and manganese. Uh, bismuth tends to give uh, calcite a yellow um, colour. Lanthan lanthanum uh, gives it a colour green uh, and similar green fluorescence is also caused by the uranyl iron. So by itself calcite is not fluorescent but it needs an activator to make it fluoresce in all these different colours. Now there's a particularly unusual form of fluorescent calcite from the mercury mines at Terlingua in Texas and also just across the border in Masquiz in uh, Mexico. Um, it fluoresces pink under long wave UV light but bright blue under short wave so it's one of the few calcites that produces different colours under different wavelengths of ultraviolet light. It also has a uniquely bright blue phosphorescence after the UV has been switched off. So we have almost come to the end of our two videos about calcite. However, we'd like to finish off by showing a few of our favourite calcite specimens from around the world.